Hi there, friends. Welcome back to Lab at Home with the Museum of Life and Science. Um, I'm happy, as always, to be here with you along with uh, Catalyst volunteer Caroline, who will be helping us moderate the chat box. Um, I hope that, as always, you will all uh, help lead our program with your thoughts and questions and ideas in the chat. Um, I also have a special guest with me today who we will introduce in just a few minutes. That's why I have my mask on. Um, this week, we are continuing our Black Excellence in Science series to highlight the work and contributions of historical and current Black scientists, particularly Black scientists, doing their amazing work right here in the Triangle. Um, and let's go ahead and highlight our scientist for the day. We'll go ahead and have Caroline call that up. Just a second here. Beautiful. So today I'm excited to share the work of Gwenael Thomas, a neuropsychopharmacologist doing research with the uh, Drazira Lab and the Curran Labs at Duke University. Um, she also does a whole host of amazing outreach and mentoring work um, that we'll put in the chat uh, in just a few minutes. Definitely worth checking out. Um, Gwenael's work unites some different fields of study, hence um, her compound title. And I thought we could maybe break it down. So. Uh, neuro refers to the study of the brain, as in neurology or neurobiology. The psycho part means the science of the mind and behavior, so thinking and acting. Um, so she studies the structure and chemistry of the brain, as well as uh, the thinking and behavior that goes along with it. Um, she also combines her study with pharmacology, which is the study of how chemicals and drugs affect the brain. Let's check out our next one. Uh, altogether, Gwenael uh, researches the way that the brain communicates with the body, um, including with other parts of the brain. I think we always have this weird kind of split between what the brain is and what the body is. The brain's still part of the body, but it is a really special uh, part. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about her work, um, and then we'll go back and explore how the brain works a little more thoroughly. Um, Gwenael studies uh, certain kinds of chemical signals that our brain uses called neurotransmitters. Uh, these chemical messengers are what transfer signals along the paths of our neurons, which are our nerve cells. More about that in a little bit. Um, in a healthy brain, these signals flow regularly without any interruptions or any kind of traffic jams of signals. Um, if the movement of these signals are interrupted or if they're um, affected, it can change a lot of things, right? That can change um, how we speak, it can change memory, coordination, it can change moods and behaviors, a lot depends on those transmitters. Um, and lots of different things can change how those neurotransmitters function, like medication or other drugs, um, our physical health, our genetics, a whole lot of things. Um, psychiatric illnesses like depression and schizophrenia are related to too little or too much dopamine, which is uh, the neurotransmitter that Gwenael studies. In other words, much like a sick heart might not be able to circulate blood through the body in the way that it needs to, a sick brain can have difficulty sending and receiving these neurotransmitter chemical signals. Gwenael is interested in studying um, medications that can help treat psychiatric illnesses by keeping uh, a healthy amount of dopamine for neurons to fire smoothly. By studying the brains of mice and observing their brain activity, she can help us learn more about the ways that the human brain works uh, in order to help people be healthier. We'll go ahead and check out our last slide here. Um, she's also a really great science communicator and mentor um, who works to make sure that the voices of underserved and marginalized people are heard, especially in medical research when it's really important to get information from diverse, diverse groups of people so that we can develop medicines and therapies for everyone. Um, Gwenael is involved with some really wonderful groups and initiatives working to make STEM more accessible and inclusive. Um, she's also a really engaging speaker. Uh, she's great at breaking down complex ideas and explaining them in an engaging way. We're going to be linking, among other things, uh, to uh, one of her YouTube videos where she talks about COVID-19, which she did at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, it's a joy to highlight her work in this small way today, and I hope you will all go check out more of the amazing things that she does after this program. Uh, we'll go ahead and as soon as we exit the screen here, I'll ask Caroline to drop some of those links we talked about in the chat. All right, so thanks for taking that time to highlight our science, our scientists today. Um, before we start our experiment, let me introduce my special guest today who will make today's experiment possible. Hi! On my end. 
Hi there, welcome Jenna. Um, Jenna has done some programming on Lab at Home before, and I'm happy to have them here to talk more about the brain. Thank you so much for being here. Jenna. Oh, thanks for having me. I was just, you know, I live down there, so. <laughs> I saw you pop up. <laughs> yeah, it was just, it was nice for you to invite me since you're always streaming in my home. Right, that's right, exactly. This is we, we, this is a little known lab at home fact is that we stream in Jonas' house. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so, so as we're talking about the brain, let me pose this question to all of you first. Um, I talked a lot about the brain earlier, but um, if we go back and we talk about like what what is the brain? What does it do? So let me ask this question of all of you: How does the brain talk to the body, or what does it do? Or what is the brain for? Kind of what do we know about the brain? I'm adjust my mask a little bit here. What do you think, friends? It's it's a it's a huge topic. Oh, I like this. The brain sends messages. It's kind of like a messaging system. I really like that idea. What else? What do you think, Jenna? About the brain? Yeah. What does the brain do? Well, I think the brain is really cool because it does so many things. It's kind of like a, a computer almost in, in many ways. Um, it processes information that we receive from the world and inside of our bodies sure. too. Um, and it transmits it throughout our bodies. So let's say if you were to throw something at me right now, I could see that with my eyes and I could attempt to catch it or I would move out of the way. <laughs> but my my brain is processing all of those things. I, I see that with my eyes and I'm I, and because I'm seeing it, I'm only seeing it because my brain is doing lots and lots of work to help my eyeballs kind of process all the lights and colors that is around me. And so the, my brain is also helping me kind of do some quick problem solving to kind of decide do I need to move out of the way? Is this object soft and heavy or light enough for me to catch it? Or should I, you know, kind of move and not try to catch it because I don't want to hurt myself. And I think the brain is so cool because uh, it can send so many different signals all at once. So do you know what kind of signals that I'm talking about? That's a really, that's a really good point. Thank you for that. First of all, amazing explanation, right? Because it's, uh, it's wild that all of that happens so quickly. We're going to be talking a little bit about some of that speed. I first wanted to mention that we had some friends in the chat um, saying that the brain sends messages to our muscles ooh, through our neurons. We're going to be talking about neurons here in just a second. We have a really great uh, question from someone in the chat um, about how drugs interact with the brain. That's really interesting. Um, when we were talking about those neurotransmitters, right, those chemical messengers that help our neurons send those messages, um, taking different kinds of medications can change the way that they flow. Mm -hmm. So if we think about it like water, like if I, um, if I have a hose and I'm, you know, spraying my flowers with some, some water, if I uh, bend my hose in half and I stop water from coming through, then that's going to affect the way that the water comes out. Uh, or if I turned up the water really high, that would affect how the water comes out. So there's lots of different ways that drugs and, and other things like our physical health can affect the way that our brain works. Um, that's a really great, great question, but it does affect those neurotransmitters. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, people take drugs and medicine to inhibit or help neurotransmitters to be processed. I know I do. <laughs> so it's like when you have too much you want a little bit less. Yes. And when you have too little, you want to help, help, you know, work with what you got. That makes, that makes perfect sense. And that's a lot of what Gwenael works with. So I'm really excited for, um, for what a lot of that research will mean for people. That is so cool. And I know, I think what we were talking about before, about how the brain is like a computer, computers work with electricity and electrons. And that's also kind of how our brain works too. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Which is, which is wild. So the brain and neurons, they work like electrical circuits. Um, and I thought we could actually take a look um, at this kind of visual aid I have um, online. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and kind of show you this cool website here. Share that. Beautiful. Now, Jenna, you are kind of our, um, our expert here. So I'm gonna real quick change that view. You're kind of our video games expert, so I'm going to have you drive a little bit. Um, we're, we're going to hit play and take a look at the way that neurons connect. So here's kind of a drawing of what a neuron looks like. You can see that it has different uh, ends. It has this kind of nucleus there. It has different almost like fingers branching out. 
Some might even say tree branches. You might even say dendrites. You might <laughs> even say dendrites. <laughs> so if we have just one neuron, it can't send a signal. You need more than one. So Jenna's called up another one. And what happens when we click our original neuron here? Interesting. Can we see it again? Yeah. We get kind of a flash. And I'm going to add another one. Yeah, I, Jenna, definitely. I would say let's add a whole string of neurons because, oh, cool. There's a ton of them. So uh, these neurons, of course, are very small. They're, they're our cells. They're inside of our body. We need tons and tons. In fact, there are billions of these neurons inside of our, our bodies, our brains, and they're all connected in certain ways. Kind of like uh, for a battery, power has to flow a certain way. Power has to flow through our terminal here in kind of the way that Jenna has arranged them. Oh no, I'm listening to have a disconnection. Oh, interesting. So I see a connection there. But not a connection here. Huh, so I wonder if there's a little bit of feedback happening. Or maybe I'm just, they're not close enough. Oh, oh there we go. Those three are linked, let's see. No, but this one is the one mm. that's not linked. Let's see what happens, uh, those three. Maybe try moving. Oh, those are good. Maybe try moving this one. This one here. Let's see what happens. Let's see here. No. Those two are. <laughs> well, this okay. is funny. I mean, it's it's a it's perfect to show how um, uh, electrical circuits work, right? If things aren't hooked up all the way, our intended you know pathway for the electrical charge or whatever signal is happening right here isn't flowing right it's getting stopped right here because something is not connected which i exactly. think is really cool it is really interesting the way that sometimes they connect sometimes they don't we could always uh we could spend lots of time rearranging Ooh, those went those went let's see what happens maybe that looks good i'm trying to make sure let me see here no not to that <laughs> we still got them going through a lot and... i think that's cool and i think something that you wanted to highlight though is you know that it's not immediate that as soon as i click this this one doesn't light up either oh Whoa. you got it good job jenna that looks great so it took um this initial neuron this first neuron when jenna clicked it it then sent signals to the next one, which sent signals to the next one, to the next one. And it traveled in a chain. Oh, that looks that looks very beautiful, Jenna. Thank you. You're very welcome. So just like in our brains, right? It's not as though we can zap something. It's not like our brains have Bluetooth, I guess we can say. <laughs> our brains have to use um, these chains of neurons and it takes time. Now, like you were saying earlier, Jenna, it doesn't take as long um, as it might for a supercomputer, right? Even our, our brains are really fast and really efficient. So if I were throwing something at you, you'd be able to calculate lots of things because your neurons are firing really fast, but they're not instantaneous. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop our screen share here. We have a really interesting question um, from Aiden about, is that how those, those neurons actually work? It's a similar, they work in a really similar way. So they're sending these messages, the messages are traveling down the chain and they have to kind of go one by one. They're helped along by those different neurotransmitters that we talked about. And that's how um, signals get from our brain to our body and from uh, different parts of our body back to our brain. So we're going to be taking um, a look at the time it takes for our signals to travel. Um, unlike in, in Gwenielle's lab, when she has lots of really cool equipment that can monitor brain activity really closely, um, we can't take a peek inside of our actual brains, but we have a really cool experiment for measuring reaction time. So the amount of time it takes for the signal to travel and for us to have a reaction to something happening. So I was wondering, um, I, I think we may have some friends who are doing it at home. If you are, definitely let me know. Um, I was wondering if Jenna, you could tell us maybe a little bit about this experiment. Oh yeah, sure. I think this is a, not only a fun experiment, but a fun game. It to is. Play. And many ways that you can change it too. So really all you need is a ruler <laughs> and your thinking caps. I got that. Great. And so what we're going to do is we're going to test how fast or how quickly we with each other can, you know, 
catch this ruler after mm -hmm. one of us drops it. And then we're going to be able to measure our reaction time or how long it's taking our brains to process all of these things in real time, which I think is really cool. It is really cool. And we're also going to manipulate different things that might affect our uh, reaction time. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take away some of our senses and also, you know, use our senses so that we can see how that affects our reaction. I'm really excited to see how that works. Me too. So if I grab this ruler really quickly, right? Um, the reason that I have two people here that we are lucky to have Jenna with us today is because if I wanted to test my own reaction time, it would kind of be, it would almost be cheating for me to, uh, to test it by myself because this is um, tested by, right? You hold the ruler with the one, uh, centimeter side down and you drop it into the other person's hand but if I'm dropping it into mine it's sort of like I've taken a shortcut my brain already knows. right you already know when you're going to drop it so you know when it's the perfect time to catch it right right precisely so I can't really do it by myself act more uh, more accurately it would help to have another person there another person's brain uh, to decide when it drops so the experiment essentially works like this you have your other person, or you can always just test it with just you and then do it with another person beforehand. You're going to look at your ruler and you're going to look at the, um, the, the centimeter side right here. So those smaller ones. I have the one, or I guess the, the small end pointing down and the higher end pointing up. So what I'm going to do is we're going to test um, I'm going to drop it and we're going to see how fast Jenna reacts. So I'm going to put it pretty close to their uh, hand here because I don't want it to have to travel very far. But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to tell Jenna when I'm going to drop it. Jenna is going to use their senses to see when I drop it. So they're going to use information from their eyes. They're going to see when I drop it, um, how long does it take for their eyes to see it? for their brain to register it, for their brain to send a message to their hand to catch it. I feel like you're gonna trick me and drop it while you're no. talking. <laughs> well, so you're ready. We can do a test one. I, in fact, I might even do that. Let's do a test one, okay? Yeah. I'm gonna get ready to get started. Ooh, that was pretty good. You got it, John. So you grabbed it around, let's call it the 16 centimeter mark. So that dropped 16 centimeters before Jenna caught it. Um, there's a mathematical formula that we'll use a little bit later in the program to determine how many seconds that is. Because if I tried to use a stopwatch, it would take me time to click the button and for me to register, for my eyes to register that you had caught it, for that to go to my brain, for my brain to send it to my hand. So it wouldn't be quite accurate. Just by, um, by looking at these centimeters, we can tell how fast uh, Jenna's reaction time is. So you do we want to do one for real? For sure. Yeah, how about we do, let's go switch back and forth. Perfect idea. So what we're doing is we're gonna test uh, the reaction time of Jenna's sight. And if you're doing this at home, you can go ahead and, and start with this one as well. Holding it close and now we're gonna get ready to get ready. Ooh, Ooh pretty speedy. So we're at about 10 centimeters. That was faster than last time. That was faster than last time, a whole six centimeters faster. <laughs> so you all don't have to write it down, but just for fun, we're writing it down. I have um, testing Jenna's sight reaction, 10 centimeters. All right, it's time to test your now sight reaction. Now let's do reaction. mine. All right, let's see if I can catch it. I hope so. Okay, I'm going to line it up to you actually like this. Oh, perfect. Ready? All right. Oh. <laughs> it looked fast, but I was about at 12 centimeters. So Jenna has me down 12 centimeters is how long it took. All right, now I see the next one is sound. So what does that mean? So for sound, instead of you looking and seeing when I drop it, this would be, um, I'm gonna have you close your eyes and um, I'm going to say ready when I drop it. So you're responding not to the sight, but to the sound. We're gonna see, is that, does that compare? Is that any faster or slower? Okay. And if you have any ideas, friends, um, whether it might be faster or slower, if you wanna add your hypothesis in the chat, we'd love to see it. 
Well, let's go ahead and we'll test it. You're going to say ready, and that means draft. Yes, I'm going to say ready. Ready. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so we got it. So that was a little bit slower. And I wonder, too, if that was our, our method. But we got it at about 26 centimeters. Pretty decent. Pretty decent. Do you want to try one more time? No. All right. I'll I want, to, want you to do it. OK. I'm also going to say ready when I okay. drop it. I'm closing my eyes. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> I got it at about, ooh, about 23. Pretty good. Pretty good. We're right around the same area, you and I. Yeah, that's really interesting. I like that it's interesting that it took me longer by sight and you were faster by sight, um, but I was slightly faster by sound. All right, the next one is touch. So what are we going to be, what sense are we going to be using now? So we are going to be using our tactile sense here. So instead of you seeing that it's dropping, instead of me saying ready, okay, I'm going to give you a tap the same time as I let the ruler And go. my eyes are going to be closed. Your eyes are going to be closed, okay. exactly. So your eyes are closed right now. And um, this is just a test run. We're not doing test it yet. Run. Okay. But as soon as I drop it, I'll tap. Okay. So that's so you're getting it as instantly as possible. All okay, right. Okay. Yeah. Get ready to get ready. Whoa! Wow! <laughs> Speedy. You didn't see this earlier, folks, but I was dropping this ruler <laughs> for every time. <laughs> we tested it out earlier, and we both had uh, a little bit of a learning curve for um for grabbing it. So you were about at want to call it about eleven? Yeah, I would say eleven. That looks good. All right, now it's my turn. We'll see if I drop it or not, friends. Okay. If you're doing this at home, I'd love to hear how you are doing. All right. Ooh, I was not as speedy. <laughs> I am about at 22. Okay. So I was at 22 centimeters. Interesting. This is just completely different from what we were doing when we were doing our practice round. <laughs> we did a little, and this, this is the thing is I think it varies. Yes. Um, you're going to have different reactions at different times. I think sometimes it will have to do with how many times you've done it, how good your muscle memory is at grabbing it. So that's why it's really important to do it a number of times. I think typically we say you should be able to replicate an experiment at least three times. Um, but we could do this. Honestly, it's it's fun. I'd love to do it a bunch of times. Yeah, I feel like if we practice more, our reaction times would get quicker. I think you're probably right. We could train them to be faster. What that would do is it would change the way that our neurons are connected. It would kind of create a shortcut if we practiced it. Um, really quickly here, we've been talking about distance in centimeters, and that's how we've been measuring what's faster and what's slower. Um, you know, so we know that 10 centimeters uh, means that we caught it faster than um, if we took 26 centimeters. But there's a way that we can change that to time. It involves just a little bit of math. I'd love to show you. It's not, not required because we can still tell, but I'd love to do a little bit of math with you all today. Can I ask you to hold our board here? That's beautiful. Um, so let's do, Jenna, our best time was you at 10 centimeters for sight. I'm going to see how many seconds were in your reaction time because it's going to be less than one, right? That was really fast. We're going to use a formula here that maybe looks a little complicated, but I promise is a pretty easy one to do. Full disclosure, I have my phone to act as a calculator for when I have to do some division in just a moment. And that's okay. It is. I agree. I think that there's lots of things we could put our brain energy toward, and that's one where we can take a little bit of a shortcut in this setting. I agree. So I've got my T here, which stands for reaction time. This is what I want to find out. So I want to set up my equation. What I have to do is multiply the distance traveled by two. So that's going to be 10 times two. I'm going to write it out here. 10 times two. <laughs> I wrote it backwards. Two times y, which is my distance traveled, 10 centimeters. And I'm going to put that over a constant. This is something that stays the same all the time, which is why it has a weird letter. Um, this is kind of the constant of gravity. So this number here, 981 centimeters squared, is, is kind of how um, the normal acceleration due to gravity. It's kind of something that is the same no matter what, if you're on planet Earth anyway. 
not like Mars, like Perseverance is. Exactly. That would probably take a, a, a different drop time. So I've got this equation now, and I'm going to solve it. And it looks a little scary because it has this bar over it. We've got an exponent. Fractions. But I know we've got some fractions. Here's the, here's the good news, is that our exponent and our square root will cancel each other out. So my new equation will look like this. One more parenthesis. One more parenthesis. Two times 10 divided by 981. So two times 10 we know is 20. Now all that's left to do is to divide uh, 20 by 981. So that's what I'm going to do. And that will give us our number of seconds. So 20 divided by 981 gives us 0 0.20. What that tells us is when Jenna caught it at 10 centimeters, it took 0 0.02 uh, seconds for that message to travel from your eyes to your brain, to your from your brain to your hand, and from your hand to your brain to uh, all of the other parts of you. That's pretty quick. That's pretty quick. <laughs> so, so let right less than half a second, right? Less even than a quarter of a second, 0 0.02 seconds. So um, what we'll do is um, we can we can show you this formula real quick, just because I know I'm sure we have some math fans out there. <laughs> Um, Somewhere. To take a quick look at this if you're interested in finding reaction time, which is just um, essentially it boils down to doing two times your measurement divided by 981 centimeters. So this is really exciting. Our best time was 0 0.02 seconds. That's really cool. That was amazing. And you, you had our fastest time, Jenna. That was really impressive. There's a lot of other things we could test. There's a lot of things that affect how our brains work. Um, we talked about how um, different like health factors can affect how your brain works, stuff like um, your mood, like how happy or sad or stressed, that can change how fast your reaction times are. So that's something I'll think about um, when kind of the next time when I'm, I'm working, I maybe feel a little bit stressed out, I'll, I'll think to myself, that may be affecting uh, my reaction time, it may be making my brain work a little bit slower. So there's lots of reasons for us to pay close attention to our brains, what our brains are telling us, how our, um, how our, what our feelings are telling us, uh, because all of it's connected. You know, our brain is part of our body. And we've done a really interesting experiment today, testing the relationship between brains and bodies. Jenna, thank you so, so much for being here today. Um, really quickly, kind of before we go, I don't know if anyone was doing it at home, but if you did, I'd love to hear about how that went for you. Did you try it? Did you, um, did you notice any differences? I know that um, there have been studies done with this same test studying differences between older and younger people, mm -hmm. like an adult and a child. Mm -hmm. uh, people have tested all sorts of different variables, right? Like Jenna, I'm a little bit older than you, so we kind of, in a way, yeah, it's barely, <laughs> barely, just very slightly. <laughs> All right. Well, there's a lot of different uh, ways that you can continue this experiment at home. I hope that you will do that. Um, thank you for joining us today, Jenna. Thank you so, so much for being here today. Would not have been possible without you. Anytime. Thank you. And um, friends, I hope that we'll see you next week when we are going to be taking a deep dive into DNA. We're going Ooh. to be breaking down some cell walls, experimenting with some enzymes, all kind of good stuff. Um, you'll, you'll want to check that one out. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, friends. Um, best of luck continuing your, uh, your experiments in the future, and we'll see you next time.